Welcome back to the blockchain series. Yesterday, we talked about the difference between centralized and decentralized applications. We also introduced the idea of blockchain. Now let's continue with day one. How do you build a decentralized application or a D app? Well, you build it using programming languages. Then you deploy it to a consensus network that uses blockchain technology. As we mentioned in the last video, many of these consensus networks require you to write your program in different programming languages. This means it's difficult to take one D app and put it on a bunch of blockchains. But with the Reach platform, we can do just that. That's one of the main reasons we'll be using it in this series. Reach is actually a blockchain development platform that lets you build a decentralized app just as you would a traditional app. You specify everything in JavaScript syntax, automatically verify the safety and correctness of your code, and then launch on almost any blockchain protocol. So the Reach platform is a programming language, a compiler, and a deployment tool. Now typically, blockchain applications are really tough to make because they require you to know very low-level programming. If you were asked to turn a car on, you could probably do it, especially if you just had to press the start button. But what if you were asked to start up a plane? It would take quite a bit more knowledge in order to do that. You would need to know what buttons to press, what levers to set, and more. Usually, pilots have a long checklist so they don't forget anything. This is like low-level programming. High-level programming is just pressing the start button to turn on your vehicle. With cars, many of the details are abstracted away, and you can focus on driving and where you want to go. Reach essentially does this for blockchain development. It allows you to focus on the logic of your application without worrying about the underlying blockchain network that's being used. Reach also makes writing blockchain applications safe. Imagine a world where your code cannot run unless it passes certain tests. Reach does this using something called the SMT solver. It checks for entire classes of errors at once. It also allows you to write something called assertions. These assertions guarantee certain functionality in your program. This makes your application less hackable and more secure. There are many more benefits to using Reach, but let's talk about what our application is gonna look like. Typically, a given software application has a front end and a back end. For our decentralized app, the back end will contain the core logic of the application. The front end will interact with the back end in order to perform certain operations, and the user will interact with the front end. For the back end, we'll be using Reach, but we do have some options for the front end. We could use React to make a web application. We could use Python to make a console application. But for this series, we'll be using JavaScript as our front end. Then we'll interact with our application using the console. If you don't know what the console is, don't worry. We'll get there later in this lesson. Let's set up your development environment so you can build your first decentralized application. This step is key to creating software applications because it's like gathering all the tools in your toolkit. You can always add more stuff later, but having a robust place to write your code is really nice as you continue to develop your app. In setting up this development environment, you're gonna need to download some stuff. If you're on Windows, pause this video. You'll wanna head over to this other video that does the installation for Windows. It's in the description. If you're on Mac, you're in luck. That's what I'm using and we'll set it up right here. The first thing we need to do is install Docker Desktop. Docker is a tool that allows us to package software in a special way with all of its dependencies. Instead of installing all the different dependencies and configurations, I can just run the application with Docker and it works. If you have a newer Mac machine, you'll want to install the version that uses the Apple chip. Otherwise, you'll want to install the other one. This has to do with the hardware of your computer. Let's install it. We'll drag it into the Applications folder in order to install it. I already have Docker installed, so I'm not going to rewrite the file but you'll want to continue with the installation process if you do not have this already installed. We'll also need to install something called Make. Make is typically used to build programs from source code. 
It builds something called an executable that then we can run as a program on our machine. You probably already have Make installed. For example, Mac OS and other POSIX systems already come with Make, but some versions of Linux do not include it by default, so you'll need to install it. In order to install some of these tools and verify their installation, we'll need to use something called the terminal. The terminal is a special way we can interact with our computer using text. Some also refer to it as the command line or the command prompt. We'll use the spotlight tool on Mac and hit enter. We can clear some of this stuff at the top with the command clear. Then I'll use command plus to make the text a little bigger. We'll also make it full screen. This is a tool that's already built in. You should already have access to it on your computer. So how do we use the terminal? In the terminal, we can type in commands and these commands accomplish various tasks. It might be opening a file or displaying some information on our machine. In this case, we're gonna type in some commands to see what we have installed. One way to do this is to check if a version of a certain tool exists. Let's check if make is installed. We'll type in the name of the tool, make, and then the option for dash dash version. Now if a version number appears, here we have 3.81, you're good to go. If something like command not found or an error appears, then the tool's likely not configured correctly or not installed. Make is not built into Ubuntu, so if you're running that, you can install it with this command, sudo apt-git install build essential. This will download Make as well as some other essential tools. Let's check if Docker is installed. We'll type in docker dash dash version. And we get a version number. All looks good. We'll also check for something called docker compose. This should have been installed with Docker. We have that as well. Now, once you've confirmed that these tools are installed, it's time to make a folder or a directory for our project. Let's make this on our desktop so we can see it easily. Now, what exactly does this command do? Well, it's actually two separate commands combined with the ampersand sign. Let's break down the first command. Make dir is short for make directory. This makes a new folder in our desktop and it also creates a reach folder with a tutorial folder. The dash p option allows us to create the reach directory as well as the tutorial directory. The second command moves us to that folder within the command line. Notice our location is now in tut and not in the home folder. CD stands for change directory. We're changing the folder we're located in via the command line. Now, any commands we run will be run from the tut folder and not the home directory. You might be thinking, that's a lot of commands. How are you gonna remember them all? Well, it takes practice, along with some help from Google. Now it's time to download reach. We'll use a special built-in command called curl. This will let us download reach from the internet. It's located at https docs.reach.sh slash reach. And we'll want to call the tool reach when we use it. And it's downloaded. Now we need to give it special permissions so we can execute it and run reach programs on our machine. To give it special permissions, we'll use the built-in chmod command. Then we'll give it a pair of symbols that make this executable. And we want to apply these permissions to reach. So that's our other input. Let's double check we can execute reach. We'll clear this up. We'll access reach in our current folder. Dot stands for the current folder and we want to use reach and we want to check its version. This is reach 0.1. Great. We can execute reach and run commands on the tool. Now reach is dockerized, which means the first time we use it, we'll need to download the images it uses. That's why we had to download Docker from earlier. This download process will happen automatically when you first use reach, but we can run it manually with dot slash reach update. If you happen to get an error with this command, make sure that Docker is running in the background. 
Here we can see all of the images being pulled from the Docker Hub. And it's downloaded. Now let's run one more command to make sure everything's in order. We can clear this up and run reach compile dash dash help. This command has to do with compiling or building our program before we run it. There are some programming languages where you write code and you can just run it. Then there are others where you have to compile the code into a different format before you can run it. Reach is that other type of language. With dash dash help, we're able to get more information about this particular command, compile. We didn't actually run a compilation or build a program. We just got more information about this particular command from Reach. It's about compiling an app. So Reach is ready to go. Now we're going to set up a tool that will make it easier for us to write code in Reach. This tool is called VS Code or Visual Studio Code and it's an IDE. An IDE is an integrated development environment and it's just a special tool that will help us write our code. Think of how we use Photoshop to edit photos. Here we'll use an IDE to write our code and that code will be in the Reach programming language. Now VS Code is just one type of IDE and there are many more out there but it is a particularly customizable IDE. In fact, there's a special reach configuration we can use to write reach code. If you want to use an IDE or another text editor, reach also has other plugins available to provide a better development experience for reach. We'll be using VS Code, but feel free to use one of these other plugins. Let's download VS Code. Once it's downloaded, we'll drag it into the Applications folder. I already have VS Code, so I'm not going to overwrite it. But you'll want to do this if you do not have it installed already. Let's open it up. To start off, we'll open the tutorial folder that we created in the terminal. So we'll go to our desktop, Reach Tutorial, and we'll open it up. From inside the IDE, we can create a new file. We'll save the file as index.rsh. This file will hold the main logic of our program, the backend logic. We can mark it as a reach program with reach 0.1. This line is required at the top of every reach program. This window or space right here is also where we'll write the reach code. It's called the code editor. Now let's enable the reach extension. We can go to extensions and search for reach IDE. I already have it installed, but here you could enable it and install it. In order for it to fully take effect, you may need to restart this application, restart VS Code. Once you have it installed, you can click the gear and check out the extension settings. Inside the settings, we can set where the reach executable lives. In this case, it's right in that same folder. So we have dot slash reach. But if your executable is located somewhere else on your machine, then you'll need to set this appropriately. Once you have it installed, you should see the commands on the left. This has a set of commands that we could run in the terminal, but now they're just button clicks. We can compile, we can run our application, update, upgrade, version, some of the ones we just did in the terminal. Going back to our code file, we can set the language mode to auto detect. This will give us the nice syntax highlighting for our reach code. Now in order to execute the code we've written in the code editor, we'll use the terminal. Executing a program and running code mean the same thing. When you open an application on your computer, whether that's Microsoft Word or Slack, you execute the program and run the code located on your machine. We will do the exact same thing, but for our code in the code editor. As we mentioned before, reach code requires compilation. It requires you to compile it before running it or executing it. Let's do that using the built-in terminal window. And I'll use command plus to make this a little bigger. In the terminal, we'll compile it, but we won't run it yet. 
We haven't added any code for reach to execute. We've only marked it as a reach file. To compile it, we can go reach compile. No failures. It was able to compile. And if we look in the Explorer, we can see what the compile actually built. It's this index default MJS. This is what we compiled our reach code into. Another option is to just click this button. It runs the exact same command and we get the same output. Now you might be thinking these two commands are not exactly the same. This first command uses something called a relative path. We happen to be in the folder where the reach executable lives, and so we use the current file path and then slash reach to access the tool. When we clicked this button, we used something called the absolute path. This is the full location of where the reach executable lives. But these two point to the same location, the same file path within the machine. This terminal window is also called the console. It's where commands can be entered and output can be shown for a given command that's being executed. For this series, we'll be creating a console application. We'll interact with it using the terminal window, whether that's here in VS Code or the terminal application that Mac provides. Now throughout this series, we'll be creating something very similar to the tutorial listed on Reach's website. If you like reading more than watching, this might be the place for you. The video series will go at a slower pace than the tutorial, but both are great resources for learning reach and developing blockchain applications. Thank you again to Algorand and Reach for sponsoring this series. If you have any questions about blockchain development, please join me in the Reach Discord in the Days of Blockchain channel. See you next time and happy coding!